that uh, the world is without malnutrition. Now, since 2002, the Global Alliance for Improved Nutrition, GAIN, has been in the forefront of making sure that this surely happens. GAIN supports public-private partnerships to increase access to the missing nutrients in diets necessary for people, communities, and economies to be stronger and healthier. And we want to find out the role of GAIN, even as they also, of course, interact with the Kenyan government. And we have the Executive Director, Global Alliance for Improved Nutrition, Mark Van Ameringen. Welcome to the Power Breakfast Show. Thank you. Welcome. Yeah, so, you. so perhaps you could tell us a bit about uh, GAIN, started back in 2002. Sure. Mm -hmm. Well, GAIN uh, was developed uh, out of the UN system. We were launched in 2002 at the UN Special Session on Children. And it was really at a time where there was just huge frustration in the world with increasing rates of malnutrition everywhere and not really making much progress. So there was a, view, a vision at the time which Kofi Annan and Bill Gates and others came around was we needed to have like a special vehicle that could try and take things uh, to scale, develop new innovations, and particularly new approaches to reach the most vulnerable. I mean, malnutrition is, you know, as you know, is a huge problem. Um, you know, we have uh, about a third of the child deaths today are due to malnutrition. You have almost two billion people in the world suffer from different types of malnutrition. Of, uh, less than a billion of those are hungry. And, and then we have the other problem coming, uh, you know, with obesity and overweight mm -hmm. now that, you know, so you have all these people who don't have enough food <laughs> oh, to no, eat. The, uh, and then the other side, you have, um, you know, obesity and overweight. And sometimes they're in the same household. So, you know, we're really focused on what are some of the solutions to, to tackle this problem. And not just using governments. Governments are absolutely critical. But, you know, most people don't get food from the government. They get it from the markets. So markets need to work. And they particularly need to work for poor people, which they don't here and, and in many other countries. Mm. It's been 11 years now. Um, how have you managed to empower different communities to be self-sustainable? Well, a lot of the empowerment comes from models which really don't require ongoing investment. So, you know, one of the big investments here and in many countries has been around adding micronutrients, you know, vitamin and minerals like vitamin A or zinc or iron into staple foods that people eat every day. And in, in many of the developing countries like, like, like here, you know, staple, some people eat 70, 80 percent of their diet is staple, maize or wheat. And so by, by just um, encouraging and using different means to get industry to add this into, their, into the staple processing, you know, that they get, people can be empowered by getting nutrition every day. They don't have to just go and be rich enough to go buy a, a supplement. But uh, if you look at traditional Africa, nobody used to supplement. And people are eating normal food, they eat yeah. type of food, maize, uh, maize and beans. Yeah. And they were healthy. There was not much nutrition, except when there was hunger and starvation, when there was drought. Yeah. So well, this business of food supplement, to me, is a way of Western countries trying to sell the product. I don't see why you should have uh, zinc, for instance, added to whatever we eat. Right. Why can't, well, we, I, why I, can't we remain traditional and remain the way we used to be? Yeah, I think what you see across you know, Africa is that, you know, people in rural areas, they're not eating a balanced diet. You know, they, they live on, you know, one crop, and it's very much based on the seasonality of that crop. So, yes. you know, you, you have quite serious, and you have had for a long time, very serious malnutrition. And then you've got almost 50% of Africans living in cities. So they're not, they don't have a little garden in the back where mm -hmm. they're growing their own mix of, 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 of foods, they're buying it in the marketplace. And if they're poor, they're buying a lot less of it, and they're usually buying the cheapest thing available. And that's where a lot of people are. So, you know, you know, so you have to, supplements isn't a solution, but it adds into the f diet things that they're not going to get otherwise to improve their nutrition. So if everybody but had the perfect agricultural situation where they have 
different, uh, they have some livestock, some chickens, some fruit and vegetables growing, and some maize. Sure, you're right. You don't need anything else. But, you know, that isn't the reality of most people. So, so and, as, and, and I think the other thing you would see, more, more, more and more people are going to be in cities. Well, like the problem, <laughs> if you look at some areas, mm. people starve not because of lack of supplement. There's no food, first of all. Absolutely. No. So, so there's no food in the first yeah, place. Yeah, yeah. So w w w how do you help no, nutrition? No, no, food is critical. I mean, you can't yes. have nutrition without food. Without food. Yeah, yeah, so no, I'm not. So I think, you know, we need food. But I think the other thing is we need the right kind of food. It's not just by growing more of one, you know, cereal that you're going to get the right nutrition. I mean, we see, you know, in this country, 35% of the children are stunted. Uh, you know, and you have 10, 10 million people who are food insecure. So, you know, we don't have enough food here. So does the organization deal with food itself? Yeah, I think what we do, really what matters we deal food. with a number of things. But one of them is, is really looking at, as you look at agriculture, you know, how do you get nutrition into agriculture? So, you know, so it's not just, uh, what we're after is having what, what you were talking about before, this balanced diet that's available so that poor people have, can have a balanced diet. They can afford a balanced diet. And so that means that they're growing fruit and vegetables. There are markets for those fruit and vegetables. It means they're using new technology. You know, for example, fish, very much, very available. Mm. You know, um, you can dry fish, you can powder it. Suddenly you have a, a very available source of protein. So those are the kind of things that we're looking at is how do you introduce these nutrition nutritious foods into back into the diet how, how do you uh, you know um, counter thoughts mm -hmm. of people who might perhaps believe that this is just influence from uh, foreigners and some might even interpret it as new colonialism how do you engage with communities so that they begin to also appreciate what they can produce traditionally yeah how do you do that? No, I, I think it's, you know, there's not one solution here, you know, to, to actually, and that's why the challenge of hunger and malnutrition is so difficult to crack. You need a whole number of keys to turn to make a, an impact. And so, you know, we do need to identify local crops, I mean, and, and things that would, you know, would make a difference. I mean, something we're looking at in, in the, in the, amongst pastoralists in the north is, introduce millet you know it's it's locally available very high nutrition nutrition so how what are those local uh crops that we can local varieties because a lot of them have you're right they've been forgotten you know as everyone's moved towards you know more western approaches and that's led us to have just maize and wheat and in these crops and forget the traditional ones so so we have to actually identify what are those local crops and what are those local vari varieties but we also have to recognize that we've got large numbers of people to, who are malnourished today. It's not tomorrow. There are billions of people that we need to reach. And, you know, um, in the world today, we have over 160 million children who are stunted. I mean, that's not going to change. They're per it's a permanent condition. So we have to deal with things now. And so you need a combination of fixing the agriculture system so it produces enough food produces the right kind of food, it reaches the right kind of people, but we also need the health system to be delivering a number of key interventions that will improve the nutrition of small children, particularly, and, and women. <laughs> you told me earlier that you have an office in, uh, you have an office in this country for yes. some time. Yes. How impactful is it? And I with whom does it work? Yeah, I think it's, it's had a, a big impact. I mean, we've been here about eight years working here, and, and um, you know, I think we've, we've taken a big lead on getting this fortification program going. So that's really adding micronutrients into the cooking oil, the wheat flour, and the, and the maize flour. These are things, you know, these, these are already being consumed by people. It's not introducing new things, but it's just adding nutrients into the production process. So uh, in the case of oil, that's, uh, you know, that program right now reaches about 15 million people every day and in this and country in this country and by next year it'll be about 20 million people so 20 million people now ha get vitamin a and vitamin d in their well, diet you tell us how, how is that done because you say fortification for instance is maize meal or, or, or whatever fortifications makes it more expensive no no i mean in fact fortification is probably the cheapest development intervention 
that exists across any area. It, it t costs pennies. If I, if I buy normal maize or yeah. and, and then fortify it, yeah. is it that price difference? It, well, right now there's a mandatory law, so everyone has to fortify. Yeah. So there won't be, you know, there's no difference. Yeah. And that's yeah. one of the great things the government has done mm -hmm. here. But no, the, the costs are, you know, maybe 